Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming out tonight. I'm going to call the Marion Township Board of Supervisors meeting to order. It is now 7.03 p.m. Uh, I'd like everyone to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance at this time. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Anyone who is interested, there are masks and hand sanitizer at the front of the room. If you are wishing to make a public comment during the public comment period, please state your name and address clearly when you come to the room. And if you have not signed in already, please sign in so that Sue has it on record. Uh, Sue, we have one person okay. on the Zoom. It's Brandon Sweeney. Okay. okay, at this time, I'll open up the floor for public comments. My name is Beverly Brossman. I'm here to represent Edna Modernis. Uh, I have a question for the committee. Mm -hmm. uh, we were wondering why no one showed up at the celebration for my mother to represent Marion Township. Do you want that on the camera? What, what day was that? That was the 12th of February. I don't think we knew about it. Yeah, I don't. I didn't, it was I didn't in the merchandiser. I don't read the merchandiser. Oh, I I'm see. Sorry. Okay. That's my apologies. I had no idea. Yeah. Oh, okay. What was the celebration? For her 100th birthday. Oh, happy birthday, Edna. Yeah. Yeah. She was 100. Yeah. Happy birthday to Edna. Wow. Yeah, I would I'll say on, on behalf of the board, belated happy yeah. birthday. I'll tell her. Uh, next question is wow. the road from Furnace Road and Sheridan Road that meet, they need to get something fixed on that road. My Wait. mother and I drove over that road. What road is that? It's said, down at the bridge that you go to the right going over to Newmanstown. Sheridan Road. You said Sheridan, Sheridan, Furnace? Oh, I'm sorry. Fur Sheridan furnace road. and Sheridan? We don't have a furnace road. We don't? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, the, 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 the signs the there where the furnace is, that says Furnace Road. Well, it's in a different county. Okay. So you're talking about Sheridan Road. But yeah, Sheridan Road. The, it, it's so bad that someone's going to either have a flat tire and hit someone else or they're going to end up having a flat tire and flip over well, or something. Can, can you go down and take a look the at bridge, that? The bridge there on the uh, Sheridan Road, that's basically our, the end of all our stock. Yeah. The end of all our district. It, 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 the, it, yeah, but this is the whole yeah, can you, thing. Can, you can Somebody got to go and check it out. Can it's you, really bad. Well, that, that's, in your, that's in another township. So, so Butch, hold on, hold on. Let's. I'm going to be around tomorrow for a little bit. Let's take a drive. We'll go look at it. Anything that is within our township. We still have some cold patch, right? Yes. Okay. First warm day that we have, we'll take some of the cold patch well, who, out. Who, who has, if, if we don't have that second part of the section, uh, who does? It, it's, uh, yeah. Let's say, Creek. Yeah. No Creek? Or, or, it's Mill Creek. Yeah. Okay, well, let me know, and then I'll approach them if it's not. But you're going around from this Sheridan Road. Or what is it, Sheridan Road? Sheridan. <laughs> and you go, and you go around the and then it's oh, just about the whole section there. I mean, it, it's well, really uh, bad. That's yeah, let's, Butch, Butch, let's take a look at it. Whatever, whatever is ours, it's bad. we'll take, we'll, we'll okay. do what we can. And if not, we'll, we'll let right, you know that it's right. Mill Creek or it's, not. It's really bad. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. Uh, we can, we should. Yeah. Sue, back to her first point about the 100th birthday uh, celebration. We should send a, a nice, yeah. like, congratulations letter. Yeah. yeah. No, I'll get a card. Well, that's, yeah, even better. And we can all sign it. Are there any other public comments at this time? <clears throat> okay, seeing none, we'll move into the first item on the agenda. Wait, uh, I, no, no, uh, oh, oh uh, thank you, Sue. I'm getting ahead, I'm getting ahead of myself. Forget those. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so the approval of the minutes for January 27th, Board of Supervisors meeting. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, the next item is uh, going to be tabled temporarily. The minutes for the February 19th workshop meeting are not completed yet. Uh, so they'll be on next month's meeting for approval. We ha also have the treasurer's report. Irene is unfortunately not able to be with us tonight because she had a work conflict. 
Um, everything is pretty much pretty standard. We took in, in the general fund, uh, $23,935.68 and had expenditures totaling around $43,305. Um, that's pretty standard for this time of year because it's just the way a lot of our revenue streams work. Uh, road fund, we had a little bit of expenses around that for winter maintenance, totaling $5,102.66. Uh, and we only had one small deposit. It was an interest on the savings account of $7.72. The only other noteworthy thing is around the uh, ARP funding, which we'll, we'll cover as one of the, the main bullet point items. Otherwise, the next step would be to motion to approve the bills for February 2022. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Hi. Jim. Hi. And just to mention, Irene wanted to mention that um, the audit for 2021 has been started by Aikens Accounting. We're just waiting for a report. Good. Thank you for, mm -hmm. thanks for mentioning that. Okay. Next item related to the finances is to move funds from the general checking to the general money market. Uh, this was a suggestion by Irene as transferring 150,000 from the general fund checking into the general fund money market account will allow us to get a little more interest on the money as it sits there. So I'll make a motion to authorize the movement of funds from the general checking to the general money market account. Second. Standing out. Oh, for 150,000. Thank you. We'll sir. call Peter. Hi. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the Patrick subdivision. They need a time extension. I've looked it over. I don't see any reason not to grant them this. So I'll make a motion to accept the 90 day time extension. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next is the Vist Bank paper shredding event. This is in Lower Heidelberg Township, uh, which they're organizing. Uh, this is going to be in sometime uh, May or June. They'd like to know if we'd like to participate. Uh, they usually charge each municipality for participating. In the past, this bank paid everyone's share. Um, I think this is a good good thing that they do for the community. And it's even if we have to pay for it, it's not an outlandish sum. So I, I'll make a motion to authorize Marion Township's participation in the Vist Bank paper shredding event. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next, check the Zoom, make sure nobody <clears throat> wandered in. Um, okay, so uh, Brandon actually had a comment in the Zoom that I just saw. Uh, same section I emailed about last year by the farm, no drainage, so the sitting water runs into the road with deep holes. Uh, Brandon? I'll make sure that we check the email. I don't know that I've seen that yet, but uh, we'll follow up and Butch and I will look into it. I think I might actually be out of frame on the, on the camera. I think somebody bumped the camera. Bear with me for just a second, everyone. Better move it a little further. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll get me in there. That, that works. Okay. Next is mower blades for the, the large mower that we do the road trimming with. Uh, Butch was kind enough to call around to a number of places, uh, several places deferred as they don't either carry them or don't happen to have them. Uh, the one place that we do have them or does have them is uh, Stevenson's equipment for a price of $242.41. And uh, yes. If, if they hold the price. So I, we're, we obviously need this. We need to have this for the start of the season. So I'd like to authorize Butch to get the mower blades from Stevenson Equipment. Uh, I'd say just to give them some wiggle room for tax and anything else if the price has gone up to up to $300 for the mower blades. Second. <clears throat> Roll call, Peter. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, next is the collection of engineering and other administrative costs, uh, the procedure proposal. Uh, we did get an email from Kozlov Stout about this. I hadn't gotten a chance to, to look through it. I know Irene was looking at that as well, uh, but this would be a codified set of steps around collecting those other administrative costs that we've not gotten in the past. Um, we certainly don't have to, to action on it tonight, but it would just kind of I'd say lend additional legitimacy to the, the whole process and that we can ensure that it's uniformly 
uh, adhered to every single time that it happens. Uh, regarding the overall collection of those costs, we've had very good response overall. There were a couple of people who were upset about seeing the additional cost, which I can understand. Uh, but we've now come to current and we will be making sure all of those things are, are billed for at the time of rather than retroactively. Um, we also did have some questions around stone, the ability to bill back to stone for the life of the contract that they have with us. And the answer was yes, that we can. There is a provision in there that does not uh, allow itself to be limited to a, a certain arbitrary period of time, like three years. So we have everything in the computer from 2014 onwards uh, in QuickBooks, but we will have to go back through and look through paper files or possibly get them from like Heigl, uh, the prior engineering company, uh, to be able to bill Stone for those costs, which should be a pretty significant figure. Um, Andy, did I miss anything on that? <clears throat> no, it, it's language in the improvements agreement that uh, was, was done initially uh, prior to any therapy being doing that allows us to collect those costs. That's good, that's very good. Okay, next is the Act 537. Uh, the SEO has started doing inspections in the Northwest District. Uh, we did get a, an email response back from Tim Wagner with some questions that we, we have based on feedback that we got at the prior meeting. Uh, the long and short of what Tim Wagner said, and I'll, I'll be blunt about it, is you shouldn't exclude anybody from the inspections is, the basic of it. Um, if anybody wants to see the letter, we can we can oblige. But uh, we had asked about a number of things, a number of questions were raised, and their answer was essentially you have to do it and you shouldn't exclude anybody from it. So we'll, uh, I'd say, kind of put that one to rest, but there's really not much more to be said about it. Um, the next step that we have in terms of the Act 537 and for a couple of other things is to do an income study. Um, I did reach out to Colleen Terry at Econ Partners. I've not seen a response back, but um, it's only been a couple of days since I emailed. Uh, so we can get that going hopefully in the spring that we can continue to meet whatever timetable that we are connected to in the existing plan, as well as start to assemble some financial uh, information around actual feasibility from a cost standpoint. Um, Jim, you found a, a very interesting posting from another township supervisor on a, a message board uh, from South Franklin Township in Washington, PA. Uh, they're apparently going through a similar thing. They have a, a sewer project. Theirs is admittedly much more expensive. Theirs is around 17 million, uh, but they're having an extreme amount of difficulty getting the kind of funding through grants that they're hoping for. And they're, they're at a point where they're wrestling with the same concerns that we have, where what do we do if we can't afford it? So we'll have to keep a close eye on that because it's, it's very hauntingly reminiscent of what we have yes. for us. Um, next is to adopt the 2022 <clears throat> septic pump out inspection levy rate. I know there was uh, some contention around this at the last meeting. Um, we did make a motion at the workshop meeting to approve this through resolution 2022-2, adopting, adopting the $50 pump out inspection levy. Uh, this will be listed as sewer on the spring tax bills. Uh, Andy, will, I think, you'll probably have a document for us to sign. Um, and I actually prepared a, a short PowerPoint, hopefully to, to help uh, maybe uh, provide a, additional understanding around this. So there are a number of things that we're subject to. One of them is the Act 537. The Act 537 has a, a bunch of stuff in it that you have to conform to as it relates to sewage management. One of them, as everyone knows, is uh, the on-lot management program, which requires inspection and pump out at, at regular intervals. Uh, another component of that is municipal sewer. As it relates to the on-lot inspection, they hand down the guidelines, the regulations, the requirements, and they require the township locally to adopt uh, ordinances and, and uh, programs that will actually meet their requirements. The ordinance that we have in does meet their requirements. They have reviewed it, they have approved it. And it's, from, from what Alan has said, it's actually um, a little more lenient than what the, the department normally allows. Um, one of the few things that we do have a little latitude on is to choose who does the inspections. So right now, as everyone knows, the SEO is who the ordinance requires to do the inspection. You can have state certified pumper haulers do the inspections conceivably at a lower cost, but one of the things that's important to understand 
is that there are still underlying costs that go along with this. There are certain things that have to be filed either with, directly with the SEO or with the department. It's not as simple as having a guy come out, pump your tank, shine a flashlight around and say, yep, everything's good in there. There are things that have to be filled out in terms of, okay, the, the baffles are good. This is good. This is good. And it has to be filed a certain way. Um, anybody that would be doing that would also have to be registered with the township. You could have somebody that's a licensed hauler, licensed inspector, but if they did it and the paperwork wasn't in, in terms of what we're held required to and what you as a homeowner or the owner of a, an on-lot system are held to, not everything would be met. You would not have satisfied all the criteria, which would essentially make you non-compliant, even though you did your due diligence essentially and you actually had the system inspected. So the, the rough cost difference, I did a little bit of math on this. The cost for the SEO is around 223-ish dollars based on kind of the, the rough estimate that we got from Alan. And that translates to about $50 once a year for four years, getting your tank pumped at once every four years. If you were to have your private hauler do that, if we remove the travel cost of it solely and consider just the, the administration and the paperwork, it's about $118, which drops it down to about $30 a year. So it's not a tremendous cost savings. There's a little bit of a cost difference there, but there are a number of other things that go into having a private hauler do it. It's again, not quite as simple as you would think or you would hope. And ultimately everything, whether it's, the SEO doing the inspection or the other person doing it, it still has to get filed. All the paperwork, the inspection materials have to go through the SEO. In addition to that, somebody is going to be managing the overall adherence to this program, which includes making sure people actually are pumping out when they're supposed to, uh, sending letters that are reminders uh, leading up to it, sending letters after the fact, if you've missed it. There's a lot of things that go into it that the SEO is gonna have to do. And where there's time, there's cost. So hopefully that helps. If anybody would like to, to see this, it's not a terribly long thing, but it's got a couple of good details on it and a couple of links to things on the first slide. I'd be happy to share if you want me to email it to you. Um, Jim, is there anything that you want to add on top of that brief? Well, the DEP's made it pretty clear that we don't have much latitude, so. Yeah, and once I'm not again, happy about it, but yeah. it's what it is. It is what it is. Once again, and we said this at the workshop, if there was a way that we could do this cheaper, better, we'd absolutely like to do it. And just from looking at all the, the things that go into this, having the SEO do it seems like the, the easiest, the shortest critical path to success to make sure everybody gets it done, it gets done right, and it gets done uniformly and reliably. It's the same reason that we have somebody that does building code inspection that is a, a designated party. Yes. How many townships in Berks County do this? Uh, I'd have to look. The SEO inspector. Off, offhand, I don't know. Well, well, I know. Yeah, I can. It's Rosh, Rosh Trumper, Robinson, and Larry. And Alan told me this week. You guys approve this and you can disapprove. Yeah, we can change it. We can change it. Yeah. 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 We just need to, to know that what the change is is the and right thing to change it to. Every other township, Sandler Township, Bethel Township, Sitar Township, all these different townships can somehow make it work, but Mary can't. Why what, is that? What do you mean make it work? It, it both can work. I asked my the lady from soil conservation was out. Mm -hmm. She lives in Center Township, Leesport, somewhere. And I said, what do you guys do to pump? Well, she said the first time I had to take the paper from the pumper, the certified inspector, mm -hmm. I had to take that to the township. But she said, now nah, he doesn't. That she pumped twice now in whatever time frame it was. And she didn't lie to me. Yeah. I know her a long, long time. And what's yep. so hard about that? Well, everywhere is a little different. So just in the case of that pumper, that pumper probably knows what to do. Because again, just from my understanding they of how this. know okay. what to do. 
and they're okay. willing to do it. Okay. But then somebody has to take that paperwork from them and file it. They, and the that's where, that's where all this, yeah, but somebody at the township has to record it, post it, send it to the state. I mean, we're talking and having to have another employee. Yeah, or, or it goes right to the SEO, which as I said, there's, there's. No, we probably don't need a full time, but I guarantee you, look at those costs. Ninety-five dollars and twenty-three seventy-five. Well, they're pretty accurate. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Yeah. And the DEP right. has made it clear that we have to do all it. Right. So, do we want the SEO right. to We're file it? One size fits all in Marion Township. We see this over and over and over. One size fits all. So, so Nelson. The state says that if you have a septic system, it has to be pumped, it has to be inspected. And we do. Okay. The inspection that you're getting that you've described before is not the same as what the DEP is requiring. And you, you said yourself, when they come out and they do that inspection, they just look at it that the, the tank is there, correct? They don't- I've never had my septic thing inspected. I asked the guy well, last time I pumped, pump, I said, uh, who, uh, yeah. Who's a certified inspector? Said so I am. Yeah, and again, he he very well may likely be. I said, oh, okay, I didn't know that. So, um, so there's uh, always. Hey, you guys are right. There's always the opportunity to change. There's always the opportunity to make sorry. things better if we see it. Sorry we live here, I guess. Oh, I'm sorry you feel that way. Well. Believe me, nobody was, I was against this until the DEP came and said, you have to do it. There's no, there is no, there's nothing on there that no says alternative. Who, yeah. who uh, inspects that? Yeah, that's, that's defined no, in the ordinance. You're so right. That's something that at, they at could inspect time. it, but who's going to do all the paperwork? The SEO in this case is going to do all of our paperwork. <laughs> at, at that cost. cost. Yes. But it would no, cost us just cost as much or what. more if we did it ourselves. So okay. we're between a rock and a hard place. I don't think so. Plus, if we got uh, spring and Coomer, and I'm sure there's other municipalities. Yeah, I don't know off the top of my head, but there's there's I really two out, though, there's there's two schools of thought. You I either have to him this week. well, you know, he works in Coomer too, and he didn't Robinson. mention Robinson and Township, Mary. Ruskin Manor, right? Spring Township has that requirement. He didn't say he works in Spring. Does. Yeah. I mean, regardless whether it's him doing it or somebody else doing it, there are still costs that go into it. It's not going to just go away. I don't like spending money either, Nelson, but it's it's a thing that has to be done. And the original ordinance that was part of the Act 537 plan for years and years and years had that in there. And and personally, I think it's uh, it's simpler, it's more straightforward, and ultimately probably going to be more cost effective in the long run. There are some other townships that have similar sorts of things that their cost, they originally figured out it's going to be $65 or whatever it was per month. And it actually ended up being less and they were able to reduce it. If that happens, we'll adjust. We'll, well, things don't tend to go down, but if there is a situation where we have a surplus, much like with the streetlights, we'll adjust downward and you would see a reduction on, on your tax bills. Um, but to just offer any sort of blanket exception for you don't have to do this because you're whatever size property or this or that or the other thing. I think you're missing the mark on, it doesn't matter the size of the property. It doesn't matter the use. If you have an on-lot system, whether it's a septic system or a sand mound or a holding tanks, you actually have to inspect annually, technically, um, you have to have the correct inspection done and it has to be filed with the state. Well, I told you before, we get a whole lot more inspection on our farm than you guys ever will. And that's that's probably for the best. And that's for our business. And, that's, and we're making food. Yeah, and again, and that's, for real. that's probably for the best. The one thing I want you to, to just take away from this is not every inspection is the same. And I know it kind of fell flat when I made this analogy before, but you can have multiple inspections on your car. You can have your inspection on your car. You can have the emissions. I know. It, it, I'm I mean, well aware. Okay. I know where you're coming from. Okay. Well, I, for what it's worth, I appreciate the, the interest and the comment that you've, you've put into it. Oh, okay. I'll, I apologize then if you feel that way.
We'll move on to the next item for the agenda, the uh, appointment of the delinquent septic pump out inspection levy. Uh, we made a motion at the workshop meeting to appoint statewide tax recovery to handle this. Uh, next item is the CoStars road salt contract renewal. A motion was made at the workshop meeting to renew for 150 tons. Uh, we figured that was the kind of a good area so that we can meet either the low, the min, or the max of the, the contractual requirements without having to potentially store salt again at Tulpahocken. Uh, the Conrad Weiser Youth Baseball uh, made a request to use the field this year. We made a motion at the workshop meeting to authorize this use of our ball field for practices and games and allow our road crew uh, to help the MTCA and the Conrad Weiser Youth Baseball uh, to get the field into workable shape again. We also motioned to reimburse the MTCA for a load of Diamond Tech soil that they had purchased for the infield and to have the township order five more loads of Diamond Techs to get the ball field back into, again, usable shape. Uh, this will be delivered and then we'll work on getting the field prepped. Next is the trash and recycling contract. At last month's meeting, uh, we had authorized the trash contract to be put out for bid on PenBid. Uh, pens will be, or excuse me, bids will be received until 4 p.m. on Monday, March 7th, and open uh, on Tuesday, March 8th at 9 a.m. Uh, we will discuss bids and possibly award at a special meeting on Wednesday, March 9th, 2022. Uh, this was to assess options that we have in trash collection to see if there's a, a better, cheaper alternative to what we have now with Eagle. Um, Andy, do you have any anything you want to add to that? There's a lot of buzz on PenBid, so. Okay, I look yeah, forward. I don't know how that will translate into how many people are going to bid, but yeah, I mean, it, that means interest is good. Yeah, interest is good. One, right? So you guys have to make the decision about the ninety-six gallon tubs. All oh, right. Uh, okay. Well, I mean, I, I don't. There was a question that popped up uh, because we, we didn't really talk about when we did this time, but when we did it at the last time, it was um, what gallonage? Uh, I think the current forty. I think it says 60. Uh, I was going to say 65, 65, 65 comes to mind, yeah. But um, somebody asked if, if 96 gallon toters would be. I don't have a problem with 96 gallons. Just what gallon. you have yeah. out there. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah. This, they're this tall. Yeah. yeah. I'll make a motion to accept 96 gallon totes as an alternative. Second. Roll call, Peter. Hi. Jim. Hi. <clears throat> and there was a, another question about um, it's the specs say allow eight containers. That is not what our current contract yeah. says. Yeah, the, the eight containers thing, because I was talking to you a little bit about that. I think that's maybe misconfusion around um, our, I think the original contract was bags because we didn't have totes at the time, but it was up to eight bags per week in a large item, which is, I think, where the question is coming from. So I think that would be like eight bags or, or a 96-gallon trash bin. So we'll make it eight bags or a 96 tote. Yeah. Makes sense. OK. Yeah, we don't need to vote on that. I'll, just, I'll pass on that information. There's, there's been a bunch of questions. Yeah. <laughs> There's more than that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Next, uh, the special meeting, as we mentioned with the trash and recycling contract uh, request for a proposal, we made a motion at the workshop meeting to advertise the special meeting. Next is the American Rescue Plan Act. Uh, we received last year $100,848.79. The final rules have been issued by the U.S. Treasury Department. Uh, according to PSATS and the CELG, any municipality receiving less than $10 million can report the money as, quote, lost revenue. Without doing any calculations, uh, we can put it into the general fund and use it for quite literally just about anything. Um, DELG, or excuse me, CELG, uh, suggests spending the total on one large project. That way, we only have to do the report once. The first report is due on April 30th. However, if we haven't spent anything, that's going to be a pretty basic report. Um, as it relates to the ARP money, Berks County is doing a grant program. The application deadline is March 31st, uh, with a maximum of $1 million or 25% of total cost of projects, whichever is less, um, which can be used for things like water and sewer or road projects. 
A uh, motion was made at the workshop meeting to authorize the submittal of the culvert projects and school road, another mile of school road, uh, which I will work with Butch on getting that all together. Uh, McCarthy Engineering sent over the care packet of all the culverts for the purposes of making that request. Uh, so we'll get that together. We'll fill out whatever we have to fill out on the Berks County website, and we'll see if we can't get grant money for some of the projects we were planning on doing anyway. I assume we have a million dollars worth of Oh, I, yeah. So, yeah. So. It's a million dollars or 25% yeah, well, of the total if you cost. Submit, if you submit a million dollars, you yeah. might get 250000 Yeah, okay. let's look at it this way. <clears throat> the one mile of school road is probably a half million dollars right there. So yeah. the one thing we have to be cognizant of, though, is that if we ask for a boatload of money, we have to have whatever the difference is for the grants in order to be able to, to do it. So we don't want right. to overreach there. Next is the Cold Summit Farmers Preserve Industrial Park Traffic Planning and Design. Uh, we received the traffic study from Traffic Planning and Design. Jim, you attended the meeting at the Wilmerstorf Borough Hall on February 8th. Um, I'll turn it over to you in a second, but uh, the one thing I did want to add is they uh, did uh, finalize their intent to move forward with subdividing the small piece, like 1.4 acres that was in Marion Township. Uh, the project now will have no ingress into Marion. We'll be their neighbor, but it's not actually going to have even a toe into, into Marion. So beyond that, they're, uh, they have a problem, as we all know, getting into that new facility. Uh, they're going to have to take 419 through Wilmersdorf. Wilmersdorf's not very happy with the prospects of 100 and, what is it, 200, 200 trucks a day truck. or some, some ridiculous amount of trucks coming through there. But uh, Cold Summit is looking into purchasing property and taking second, or not second, yeah, second street second entirely street. through, up through the cemetery and out the other side, uh, or buying the property at the corner of second street so that they can make that a little wider. So the company themselves were, I was very impressed with them in, in the fact that they're willing to do that. They also give uh, money back to school districts. Uh, they just, in general, seem like pretty decent, nice people. And they, they made it clear that they wanted to be good neighbors, even though they're not going to be in our township. They wanted to be a good neighbor and make sure that everybody was happy. So it hasn't been finalized yet, but Wilmersdorf has some problems with, with how this is, is going to, how this is going to happen. We are or is planning to limit truck traffic through here. They're not going to bring trucks down through our main area. We'll post that. Will we get some additional cars? Probably, because there's going to be employees coming in from God knows where. And some of them may decide that we're a shortcut and run through here. So we'll have to make sure that it, everything's posted and make sure the police are here at, at peak times to arrest those that go through here too quick. Okay. And hopefully we'll have these stop signs in place before that happens. Hopefully, that's uh, we have. That's the next item. We haven't actually gotten that back, but I'm I'm very curious to see if any of the intersections met the the yes. warrant requirements. Um, one thing I did want to say is uh, we had talked about at the workshop about making a, an introduction between the the developing firm and the homeowners association, Stonecroft, oh, yeah. um, simply because they they did express an overture to, <clears throat> to want to be good neighbors. They're quite literally in their backyard. If there's a group in Marion Township that's gonna to wanna to have their voice heard, it's the folks Probably at Stonecroft. Right. Yes. Um, one of the questions that I, I had, Andy, about stuff on Main Street is if we were to put up signs restricting class uh, Main Street to class two traffic, would that impede uh, anybody that is moving like a tractor or I know they haul manure up Main Street, would that impact that or is that or is there an exception because it's agriculture it might be an exception because of uh, ag vehicles yeah that, uh, that's that we'd have to we'd have to study that and we'll get jim involved we'll yeah be involved in that too. yeah because i was the the first thing that went through my head is okay we can very easily get rid of big rig traffic by limiting it to class two that's right. that's pretty easy um the next thing was is that going to have any impact on the agricultural elements that we have in the community I mean, we're hauling people moving tractors etc um, and then are we going to be able to potentially use the traffic planning and design survey that we just did for the stop signs? Will that be potentially applicable for what we're looking at for this too? So I'll reach out to Jim McCarthy and, and follow up on that because if, 
I know the, the studies are only good for so long. So if we have a, a valid study that now's we can use, now's the time to use it. Okay. Jumping ahead, the Western Berks Joint Zoning Ordinance Amendments. This passed unanimously at the hearing held on February 17th at Heidelberg Township. Uh, North Heidelberg Township would like to add solar farms as an exceptional use within the highway commercial, light industrial, and general industrial districts. Marion has a highway commercial and general industrial, which is Dutch Valley. Uh, a zoning hearing would be needed to grant an exceptional use. So that went through. It adds in regulations and requirements around solar farm uh, installations in anywhere in the, the joint zoning district, uh, which helps to protect uh, farmland, particularly from being turned into a, a large solar vector array. So very, very good positive thing that's been added there. Next is the Berks County Conservation District Memorandum of Understanding. A motion was made at the workshop meeting to sign the MOU. Uh, this just has to be signed every five years or so. The last one was signed in 2017. Uh, they wanted comments or concerns by February 28th. Uh, then they'll finalize the MOU and send it for execution, but we've, we've already agreed and signed it. Um, we did receive a donation request from Conrad Weiser High School Class of 2022 graduation party. Uh, we tabled this at the workshop meeting. Uh, in the past, we had donated $50 to them previously, but we opted not to do that this year. Okay. Next was a letter of support request. Uh, this was received from Western Berks Ambulance. Um, this is basically asking for our support for their operation within our community. There's no financial obligation, just a, a statement that we, we value and appreciate the work that they do. Uh, we made a motion to authorize a letter of support to be sent for their request. Next is the PSATS Trustees Insurance and Retirement Services Disclosure Statement. Uh, a motion was made at the workshop to adopt this disclosure statement. Uh, they'd also like us to post it on our website. So as soon as I have a clean copy, I'll get it up there and have it available. Next was the John Deere Financial Automatic Payment Enrollment. This allows us to set up scheduled payments for the, the new back. Uh, backhoe front end loader that we purchased. We made a motion at the workshop meeting to authorize this. Um, in similar fashion, uh, Butch brought to our attention that we could set up a, a credit application at Paul B, uh, which would allow him to pick up materials that he needs in a, a road maintenance capacity, and we'd receive the bill later. It would also allow us to take advantage of a 2% discount for paying within a certain period of time. Uh, we made a, a motion at the workshop meeting to authorize this. Moving into culverts, the culvert on Marion Drive by Jacob Weiss. I've reached back out to McCarthy Engineering. They will have the submission in for the dirt and gravel low volume road grant for this project in before the deadline. Um, so we're just kind of waiting on that one to see if we can get grant funding for it. Um, culvert on Marion Drive North of School Road by Oscar Manbeck. Uh, we're still awaiting a permit on this one. Um, there's another one, uh, the culvert on Sheridan Road by Gerald Hoover's farm is also waiting a permit. Um, from what the engineer has said, this is not uncharacteristic to wait for long periods of time to get permits. Um, oddly though, we did receive the permit for the culvert on Reichert Road. So Butch and I will be working on that. Uh, Butch will be getting in contact with Craig Bonneberger at McCarthy Engineering about some of the specific requirements on that. And we'll be looking to get that hopefully started once the weather turns in the spring. Uh, unless, of course, we can get that Berks County grant uh, that we were talking about, in which case that may change that slightly. Nice. Uh, the next item on the agenda uh, was a request that I had as a citizen, not as a board member, was uh, the turn back or the abandoning of a small portion at the end of Shady Cabin Circle. Um, I have not seen any updates on this, but I have intentionally been keeping myself at arm's length on this. Uh, Andy, do you have any any updates to add or just kind of still in progress? I was told at the last meeting that you, you were talking to Roy. Okay. So I, I had a little bit of discussion with Roy. Roy's okay. major concern okay. was, was twofold, okay. which was uh, continued access to his property, which that's something that I could either work out as a property owner the property owner sort of arrangement, or we had something recorded on the deed. Um, and the other question that he had was um, more about when it gets turned back, what it reverts to. And I think there was maybe a little misunderstanding around what was actually happening there. And it's not like I'm getting anything extra. It's just the the piece of my property that's bisected by the, the road that exists on paper only. Um, and it would just be relinquishing that, that township ownership of it. 
Right. Um, if there's a piece of the road that went over Roy's property, just hypothetically speaking here, that wouldn't go to me. That would go to Roy because he's the owner of said property. Right, Gesundheit right. Jim. Yeah, um, I think his concern is access. Yeah, and that's and that's why I, put, I how, told him, and I didn't see you last month. Yeah. Just, okay. I, I, just I, talking, so yeah, I, I, I see Roy in the audience. Out. So Roy, I'll I'll connect with you on that and make sure that we we have kind of a working understanding on that so that they can move forward on anything that they have to move forward on. So um, we'll be in touch. Um, next is the road projects for 2022. I'm getting together a list uh, largely comprised of the culverts that are going to need to be replaced, uh, roads that may need crack sealing, oil and chip, cold patching, et cetera. Uh, that way we have that for the things that we need to address during the course of this year. Yes. So crack sealing is, is pretty basic. It's uh, kind of a hot asphalt mixture that they, they pour into the crack and it, it seals it so that you have um, either reduced or eliminated water infiltration because that's one of the, the biggest problems that especially around here that we have with the roads is they get a crack. Who, who actually does it? The, like, uh, Painting companies. Martin? Yeah, Martins, Martins does it. Okay. Yeah, so there's a bunch. It's not something that we'd have to go out and buy equipment or rent equipment or anything like that. It can be added into whatever else. Um, yeah, yeah. And say so, yeah, I'm not, I'm not an expert on it, um, but I, I do know that is that is a good, relatively cheap thing that can be done on a roadway as long as it's not in really bad shape to help get life, extra life out of it, um, so that you don't have water getting into the road base, freezing, thawing, freezing, thawing, and deteriorating it worse. Yeah, that's that's the one that would probably benefit from it the most. The Stoutsburg Road, most of the road surface is still pretty good. The problem yeah. is that there's, especially where they added on, they added additional width at one point, there's a, a pretty good seam there that if we don't seal it or seal it and then like oil and chip over it, you're going to have a situation where at, at some point it will separate, it'll heave, and you'll have a, a shoulder that is like disconnected from the road. So, no, I, I just wanted to know. Yeah. Yeah, it's not yep, and say not not anything that we would be doing as a road crew simply because we don't have the equipment needed to do it, but it's it's a good thing to have in the mix of the road repair. Okay, well, what about Caterman Hill where the where they dug the gas line and they paved half the road, but the other half they took chunks out of it and they didn't fix that. Yeah, okay. I saw that. Okay, I'll There's add that. I'll add that to the list. If you know of any, I know I'll be driving around. Butch will be driving around. Yeah. Okay. Let's say, well, you make, you make the list. I'll make mine. We'll mesh them together. But that's, again, it's a pretty simple, easy thing to do to help keep the road in good shape. Next item on the agenda is the rental, rental inspection ordinance. We're still working on this. There's a, a number of ordinances that we need to go through to make sure that we are hitting the right notes with this and that we're not uh, creating a, a burden or a hardship while still satisfying the concerns that we have around safety. Um, I think this is going to be a situation where uh, this, along with the saldo fees and stormwater management, is going to be a pretty time intensive process, possibly for the March workshop meeting that. We'll just sit down and devote some time to that. Um, building maintenance, the next item on the agenda, we are kind of putting that on a hiatus for the time being, unless it's something critical. Uh, we're assessing the long-term costs of renovating this building into a usable space for both first floor and second floor against the cost of uh, breaking ground and replacing the building elsewhere within the township. So we'll have more as that develops. The, the first step is getting quotes for things, both for a new space, as well as for remediation here, new windows, heat for the upstairs. One of the, the things that we did get a price on was an elevator, which would allow ADA compliant access to the second floor. Just the actual elevator components was just close to $100,000. That did not include the shaft. So the actual costs of construction for an elevator and operation and maintenance for the first year would probably be in the neighborhood of 150,000 just for that. So. We have to look very critically at cost 
a need and use for this space and see if it would be prudent to continue putting funding here or if it would be better to get a space elsewhere that would be a little more uh, purpose oriented as a, as a community space having a, a large gathering area to be able to do things like um, antique shows for the community association or bingo nights or um, have a big enough space that if we had a, a good turnout for a meeting that we would be able to accommodate everybody within the room. So we'll have more on that, but uh, it's been pretty barren. I know Irene reached out to a number of firms for things and really didn't get much of a response towards the end of the year. So hopefully once it's warmer, we'll be able to get some good solid numbers and start really discussing this. Hopefully we can proceed to it, getting some estimates on a new building yes. and land, procuring the land. Yeah. There's no it. reason we can't do the two in tandem. Because I think eventually we're going to find that there's too much money to put into this building. Yeah, I know the, the, the windows alone are extremely expensive. And now at $150,000 elevator. Yeah, and we went through this in, in more discussion on Saturday, but the, the bottom line is it's, it's a lovely building. It's got a lot of historical significance yeah. within the community, but we're, we're very much kind of shoehorned in, into this space. The office, Sue, is, is cramped in there. She doesn't have enough space to adequately work and file everything. Um, we don't have uh, space for any sort of evacuation if there was a flood or any sort of nat uh, natural disaster. We don't really have a dedicated space for that. Uh, even things as basic as the garage. The garage was classrooms that was renovated into being a garage space at some point. And it shows in a lot of, a lot of uh, extents. Uh, the one wall is heaving because it was put in a, a certain way many, many years ago. Um, the center of the room is held up with like metal stands, like metal posts. And compared to other municipalities, we don't really have a, a good designated space to be able to work on the trucks. It's pretty much standing room only in there. So this is what we need to look at and what we need to consider as, as we move through that exercise. Mm -hmm. Next item on the agenda is the credit cards policy. Uh, Irene did a very good write-up on that. Um, I've been working on putting together a handbook of things. I have a couple things I need to add around like illness and sick time off policies for who it applies to, who it doesn't apply to. In the case of Sue, she has uh, PTO, paid time off days that she can use for personal or illness. Um, other individuals like um, Butch on the road crew, not so much. So need to make sure that that's outlined in there effectively. And uh, I've snapped the credit card stuff in there for acceptable use, um, but hopefully next month it'll be done and we can, we can go through it and see if there's any changes or revisions that need to be made. Okay. As I mentioned before, the saldo uh, fees and the stormwater management ordinance and fees uh, need to be reviewed. The saldo ordinance is from 1991. The fees are from 2005. The stormwater management ordinance and fees are both from 2002. Uh, Jim McCarthy did send us a copy of Why Missing's Fee Schedule, which was incredibly long. Um, this is, again, going to be best served at the March workshop meeting where we sit down and we look at the two side by side. Here's a, a current copy from Why I'm Missing versus what we have, because uh, pretty much everything is going to be out, out of date in the sense that we're going to have to increase prices. But there may be things that we're not even aware of that we're not charging for that we should be charging back for. So we're going to have to go through that and essentially one by one is this applicable do we have it yes or no is this applicable do we have it yes or no um, and then build that up so that we can adopt uh, new fee schedules for those two that is the last item on the agenda um, let me find the police report it's usually the last page did you put that in the, the meeting packet mm -hmm. Line. I'm just not seeing it. It's right before engin the engineer's report. Should be second last thing. Okay, because the one that I have, the last thing is the diamond text on that PDF. Here. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. That might be a me thing, but thank you. Okay, last month there was a little bit of activity around EMS and fire advisories. There were 14 total, there were four traffic stops and three citations issued, uh, 46 security checks, and really not much else. So pretty much the standard month, a little, little more activity on the uh, 
the EMS and fire advisories, but otherwise pretty quiet all around. Thank you. Um, I have no other items for comment. Uh, Irene obviously is not here to comment. Jim, do you have any items that you'd like to comment upon? I have nothing to add. Okay. Andy, do you have any comments? Yeah, um, just one. Regarding the fees and permit schedules, mm -hmm. um, Heidelberg is in the process of redoing theirs. And uh, I could send you that to look at. It's probably more applicable, okay. comparable than uh, this. Is going to yeah, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, that would be very, very, very appreciated. We'll do. Okay, any other comment? That's it. Okay, Sue. Do you want to do an engineer's report or see anything on there? That you're um, on? Yeah. Uh, the engineer's report that we received, there was uh, a number of things. We already went through the four culverts. That was a portion of that. Uh, Dutch Valley Food, um, their submission was reviewed. Uh, Planning Commission recommends final approval for it. Um, all the other agreements are being prepped, so we'll see that come before us again sometime in the near future. And those were done last night. Okay. I didn't know if there was more because there was a couple that were contingent. Like we, we approved it contingent of some things, but um, okay, perfect. Um, Stonecroft Village, um, I haven't seen any movement on that other than they're still uh, hoping to do road paving during 2022. They will have to do remedial repairs uh, to like the street and the curbing prior to, to any closeouts. Um, Patrick subdivision is still under review. Um, the main street stop sign study is done. We're just waiting for the report to come back in. Um, Spur Road, there was no stop sign study that was required for that. Um, we already put the ordinance in. Uh, there were some missing financial surety items that were discovered for 1125 uh, Route 419. Uh, missing inlets and storm piping, uh, which should be installed per the approved stormwater management plan. Um, and the next and final thing was the trash hauling bid, which went out and we're going to be addressing through a special meeting on March. Any other comments, Sue? No, nothing. Thank you. Okay, I'll make a motion to adjourn. The time is 7.54 p.m. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone.